So, you want to work in private equity? Well, I don't blame you. It's definitely one of the best jobs in the world. Being a GP is great. I can tell you, I was one for many years. You get the deal-making excitement of investment banking, but the security of management fees. You get to see how companies are run from the top, from the control room, at senior management and board level. You're at the forefront of the action, sometimes even on the cutting edge of innovation if you do venture deals. If you are a partner in GP, you even have your own business, your, your own boss, with the upside of carried interest and maybe even getting to raise another fund if things go well, with a massive downside protection of management fees. Let's say that you are a partner in a GP managing a 200 million euro mid-cap fund. So you are, for example, one of the four senior people owning the GP, perhaps. The annual management fee can be 2%, so 4 million euros used to pay salaries and other operating costs is going to be your budget. There might even be quite a, a, quite a bit left over that you can tuck away discreetly. The fund might have a seven to 10 year life. Probably the limited partnership agreement specifies that the GP can only be fired by LPs with some kind of super majority like uh, 75 or even 80%. So it's almost impossible for the GP to be sacked unless there is some real misbehavior or gross incompetence there. If things don't go well, you'll be able to collect a good salary for years before it all fizzles out. If things do go well, you'll get a seven-figure carried interest and maybe go on to raise your next fund. All in all, it's a pretty attractive proposition. Even if you don't get to reach the pinnacle of the profession, which is to be an owner of a successful GP, it's still pretty good. You could work for one of the large firms like KKR or Carlyle, or for an LP active in private equity, in their funds or direct investment groups. Or you might work with P firms as a service provider in a bank or corporate finance advisory firm. But the pinnacle, the top of the food chain, is being a GP in a way that you can be master of your own destiny. Of course, you'll be accountable to the LPs, but that's a bit like passing customs control. You're at their mercy at the moment they are checking you and fundraising, but once you're through, that's that. It has been estimated that globally there are about 8,000 private equity firms. There are a few global mega funds like KKR, Carlyle and Blackstone, but most firms are so-called mid-cap firms, which might manage 100 to 500 million euros and have some 10, 20, 30 people. This might well also be the size of private equity groups within other kinds of investors, active in private equity, like pension funds, insurance companies, sovereign wealth funds, developmental financial institutions like IFC or EBRD, and family offices. These teams are therefore middle-sized organizations. One characteristic of this is that everyone has to pull their weight and there is a bit less corporate politics than in bigger organisations. So you have to be good and hardworking. But of course, like any career, it's ultimately about luck and being in the right place at the right time. If I estimate the workforce, the 8,000 GPs probably employ some 100,000 people to that, I would add the teams at the LPs, which probably gets me to 120,000 or so. Let's use a combined attrition and growth rate of 5%, and that gets me some 5,000 vacancies a year, excluding service providers. Well, that's not a lot of vacancies. And indeed, private equity jobs are scarce and very sought after. But let's think positive. Someone has to get these jobs, right? I will give some suggestions on how to maximize your chances in this video. Now let's look at the skills you will need to successfully work in private equity. 
There is often a debate in, in the industry about the necessary skills required to work in private equity. There are those who argue that the P manager needs investment banking skills in order to do financial analysis, valuation and deal structuring. And there are those who argue that a P manager needs operational skills to understand how companies operate, how their management is performing, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the company. Periodically, there is a public debate about how fund managers need to get back to basics and focus on operational performance rather than financial engineering. The truth is that it is a futile debate. Private equity is a distinct third profession with elements of both investment banking and company operations, so to speak. One thing that is important to add is that there will also be a substantial variation in the needed skill set according to which of the four subclasses of private equity we are talking about. Buyout, growth, venture or mezzanine. With buyouts and mezzanine, the needed skill set is weighed more towards financial skills and with growth and venture more towards operational skills. But it is still a nuanced distinction. For example, the operational skills for growth, like uh, managing an add-on acquisition, are themselves quite different from those needed in venture. The question is, how do you develop these private equity skills? The complication being that the skill set I have described is multidisciplinary. It would need to be acquired from different work sectors. So how is it done? Well, private equity is most frequently a second profession. Many people will come into it a bit later, having done something before that, that provides them with skills, experience, and connections they can apply to private equity. It's like an investment bank hiring a junior person from an accounting firm once they are trained up, but it's an order of magnitude more than that. Let's take an example, me. Before I became a GP, I was for five years a troubled company administrator in an accounting firm, and then after that, for 10 years, an investment banker in London, firstly in debt capital markets and then in M&A. So I brought this knowledge to bear when I became a GP some 20 years ago. And it's a similar story for many others. GPs have previously been bankers, corporate executives, entrepreneurs, consultants, accountants, lawyers, even politicians and journalists. All this does not help those of you who are more junior starting out in your career, but I will have some suggestions and ideas for you shortly. There are ways for those early in their career to get into private equity. Bear with me. Who are the typical people who aspire to get a job in private equity? Let's first make three categories based upon age and experience. Category one comprises people who are looking to transition to private equity mid-career from another field, such as investment banking, consulting or corporate management they are likely to be in their late 30s or early 40s. I will not discuss this group here, perhaps in a future video. Category two consists of very experienced people who are looking to work in PE funds or PE backed companies, but not as a member of the core PE team, but as an operating partner or board member or external expert. I will not discuss this group here either, although I would encourage both of these groups to keep watching as there is still a lot here that may be of interest to you. Let me turn my attention to category three, those who are likely to be in their 20s or early 30s, so either graduates or those with two to five years experience or so. How can you best position yourself to get into private equity? Let's start with segmenting the market. You have Western elite people, someone who has gone to the right schools. This typically means an elite undergraduate school plus postgraduate at a top US or European school 
doing a business or finance type master's program and perhaps with some name at a brand name bank or consultancy after first graduation. These people will mostly target mega funds as their CVs tick the boxes, so to say. Secondly, you, you have diaspora returnees. Someone from an emerging market country who goes to the US or Europe for a master's, maybe works a few years, and then uses that to leverage a good position back home. Thirdly, you have the consulting profile. Someone who has a sought after technical degree, then a subsequent master's, plus experience in consulting or in a certain industry in a developmental type position. Within these three general profiles, you then need to assess your level based upon these two questions coming up. First question, are you or your family well connected? Second question, does your CV totally tick all the boxes? Perfect university, right internships, no gaps. If you are lucky enough to answer yes to both these questions, you have a very good chance, especially with the large firms who hire in a similar way the investment banks do. If you can answer yes to one of the two questions, you have a lower chance, but are still in the running. If you answer no to both of the questions, you are going to have to do something to boost yourself. Otherwise, you don't have much chance at all, unless you somehow manage to get some actual private equity experience. In a minute, I will show you some ideas on how to give yourself this boost that I have just mentioned. Let's segment the private equity market among GPs, LPs, service providers and private equity backed companies. All of these four can be a route into a private equity career. Our first segment is GPs. GPs, we can then further segment into three categories, mega funds, mid cap funds and small and developmental funds. Mega funds will be hiring more like investment banks with more of a box ticking mentality looking for the top schools. Mid cap funds will look at prior experience, some evidence of a genuine interest in private equity and whether you have something in your CV that resonates with their fund like, for example, a clean energy fund being interested in your green en energy engineering degree. So it's very much about a specific hook being there. Small and developmental funds may not pay very much salary wise and especially in emerging markets may be more accessible as an employer if you can show some link to what they are doing. Our second segment is LPs. These will include pension funds, insurance companies, developmental institutions, sovereign wealth funds, family offices and banks. They will have private equity groups within their operations, typically with 10 to 50 people. One route may be to get hired for one area and then transfer to the private equity unit. This often happens, for example, in developmental banks, which have regular internal rotation. In others, you may have to be proactive, getting to know the people in the private equity unit. The salary will be lower than a GP and you also may need to dispel the suspicion that you are using them as a stepping stone to a further GP career. Family offices are more complicated as the hiring is more based upon connections than any kind of formal process. Our third segment is service providers. These include banks, investment banks, trust companies, accounting firms, consultants and professional associations. The way here is to be part of building up the PE client practice within that firm, which may then lead to a direct opportunity in private equity. Of course, this is an indirect route and therefore more time consuming. Our fourth and last segment is private equity backed companies. These can be divided into startups, which are venture backed and bigger companies backed by buyout or growth funds. This is also an indirect route into private equity and will depend on the level of visibility your position may have on the level of appreciation you develop for private equity 
by virtue of your position. It is likely that in a startup with a more fluid internal hierarchy, you may come into more contact with the VC backers, perhaps working with them on some project which would give you visibility. Having segmented the market of possible employers, what can you do to boost your CV, especially if it does not quite tick all the boxes we mentioned earlier? If you're still studying, then consider internships, whether paid or unpaid. These could be with a GP if you are lucky enough. Otherwise, do consider other segments like startups, who may well appreciate someone who can work, if only to make the coffee, but cost them nothing. It might also be with a growth or buyout backed company or assisting a private equity operating partner, board member or service provider. The key is to have a track record of internships over time, which have a consistent private equity flavor and show a consistent interest in private equity over time. Other things you can do as a student is doing your thesis about a private equity topic of interest which may allow you to have contact with private equity firms as part of your research. But choose a topic they will find interesting, like a portfolio management study or something innovative, so that they don't see you just as an irritation. The key here is an original non-generic topic rather than the usual boring study about macro return statistics and other stuff they have seen a million times from thousands of other students. You could volunteer at private equity events and conferences. I know, for example, one young lady whose private equity career started with her job with a catering company as a waitress serving cocktails at a European private equity association's annual gathering. So you never know. You can also make yourself available for free work via LinkedIn and other similar platforms. You can attend some specialist private equity courses offered by various professional training companies. This can also be a very good networking opportunity, a way to get very specific know-how which you can use at interview, as well as the box ticking factor of getting a diploma from an accredited entity specifically in private equity. Increasingly, this is important and people may question the commitment of someone keen to get into private equity but unwilling to spend the money on such a kind of training. Above all, what you should do is build up a track record over time. PE managers relate to track record because they have to present a track record to their LPs to secure funding. So think in those terms when you are building your profile and CV. A few don'ts are also useful to mention here. Don't irritate people with stupid one-way requests for favours on LinkedIn, such as, can you pass me all your PE contacts? Sure. It will have the opposite effect. People will respond to requests where there is something in it for them as well. Don't contact people on false pretenses. I have personally refused, received a few elaborate approaches by rather junior people to join a supposed board of directors of an acquisition vehicle they were supposedly setting up to do private equity deals. Then it turned out the vehicle did not exist and there was not even a budget for phone calls. Don't waste people's time. They won't forget it. Don't, invest, don't invent a sudden interest in private equity a month before graduation. If you have not laid any groundwork for a couple of years before, people will see through that. In conclusion, I would say that the sooner you decide that private equity is for you and the more advanced time you have to lay the foundations on your CV, the better chances you will have. Good luck.